Yeah, look, ladies first. Uh, so we'll start with Hoosier Philly. So, you know, she got trouble right out of the gate, was put in an unusual position and had to steady in traffic. The pace was very slow and the horses down the backside that were one, two, stayed one, two throughout. So she was really only the only horse in the race that made up any ground. But, you know, you have to also consider what she did down the stretch of the race. She did not pick up uh, the top two finishers at all. I thought we'd see some punch from her. We didn't. Uh, I don't label it as a good race. So hopefully the things that happened in that race are the reason she didn't run well. And, you know, she's trained well going to this one, so hopefully she runs a good race for us. Because because you have not been shy about saying she's the best horse you ever trained. Yeah, yeah. And you know that these horses, I mean, Serengeti Empress, remember, was it the Fairgrounds Oaks? Yeah, and look, I... I, I, I I know everything I said, and I know everything that's happened since I said that, uh, specifically this last race. So, uh, you know, I, I haven't lost any faith in Hoosier Philly, and although I'll be a little nervous when she goes in the gate, I'm looking forward to a big race. Different reasons, but is it a sort of a similar situation to when Serengeti Empress, uh, but she had bled in the Fairgrounds Oaks yeah. and then comes back and wins the Kentucky Oaks, that sometimes you just have to just judge what you're seeing every morning in their training and throw races out. Well, in the case of Serengeti Empress, I mean, we had our reason. We knew why she didn't run well, and we were able to work on that and correct it. In the case of Hoosier Philly, I'm not so sure we can say with 100% certainty that the trouble she got in out of the gate was the reason she didn't run well. So it's a little bit more gray. Uh, um, and, and, I mean, like I said, she's trained well, so hopefully she runs a good race. Okay, boy second, Curly Jack. Ran big and finishing second in the Kentucky Jockey Club and then right. ran in the uh, Risen Star. Yes. Yeah, so Curly Jack's Risen Star performance off the layoff, it, it wasn't that good a race either, but he was cl close to a very quick pace that day. That pace collapsed, and the big, you know, closers in the race were all the ones that ran well. So, you know, he was up against it pace-wise. Uh, I think from his post, which is the three-hole, uh, look for him to just kind of sit out of the gate, Edgar, on the horse, and, uh, and, and not ask at all. And wherever he is, he is. And we'll try to make a, a finishing up uh, move on him. But what about the field overall? Um, it's a very nice field. It's a very big field. Uh, traffic is a consideration in that race, whereas in the Oaks, you know, Hoosier Philly drew to the outside in a five-horse field. So if something were to happen out of the gate with her, you know, I think we can recover quickly and get into a position. So it's a different dynamic for sure with that big field. And doesn't look like there's an epicenter. Of course, epicenter wasn't quite epicenter at this time last year. Well, I think you just said it. You know, this is the race where people tend to step up, where horses tend to step up, the Louisiana Derby. So uh, who's going to be the now horse after that race remains to be seen.